Well, how to do it. Today is Wednesday, the 21st of July, 2021. Spy another little bit of an update today. 0.8% to the upside. Back at the levels we were around last week, Friday. Pretty insane to see the recovery on that bounce at the start of the week. Just continuing to pound this roller coaster ride straight line on the spy. Absolutely ludicrous. A few market internals today around the horn. NASDAQ, a total dollar volume traded today of $152 billion. NYSE, $230 billion total dollar volume. And the OTC markets, $1.9 billion total dollar volume traded today. One short morning dump trade for me. Um, not the only opportunity, but the only one I took. And then a few longs. Seeing a lot more long opportunities come about. A lot more over 100% movers around the market. So... Maybe we can assume or say that the summer season is drawing to a close or we're just kind of been blessed with a pretty hot summer season. So we'll take it either way. MEDS, this one is I traded short in the morning initially. Uh, traded, had to take up two day trades on this one initially. Got in pretty uh, gung-ho on this one early of trying to get that early view app crack entry. And yeah, you can call it a little bit early, but... It, Shoulda, coulda, woulda started dumping from there. I'm not pissed at myself or angry that I was too early, that I didn't even see a crack of VWAP before I got an entry. It was cracking VWAP pretty, by a good amount of standard of that. But, you know, looking in hindsight, of course, VWAP was still rising at that point, which I didn't factor into the trade at all. I just saw price action coming back down and choppiness, whatever. So, ended up forced into having to cut that at the high of day risk level. It was an $86 loss on that. Of uh, 200 shares, yeah. So I knew the trade wasn't over. As this one was pulling up, I looked it up in my database and realized that I had traded this one to the long side before in the past. If we look on the daily that we just saw, these two days here, I actually traded to the long side looking for continued craziness. Um, nothing else much on the daily past that, but if we go back to those days, the first day was June 10th, and looking at this pre-market very pure or beautiful hard green spike to the upside, but it was still rising pretty heavily beyond 20-30%. Uh, you could have called this uh, this move here maybe a VWAP crack signal, but been forced to have cut at the break of high day after that. Uh, the internals on this one, fundamentals I should say, it is an American healthcare company pharmaceutical retailer. Float of 3.2 million, so big factor we have to take account of, and 7% reported short interest. So then, yeah, on this day, I believe I tried to trade it on this VWAP hold and then ended up cracking the fall below there that I cut for. So I wasn't even involved in this in the morning. But I'm looking back in this type of chart, it was funny to see that that news catalyst for that day was pretty similar to what we saw today on the 21st. It was... Back then, it was the launch of, um, on this 10th day, it was a launch of MedCheck's Health Passport app for iOS devices. So, okay, decent news, but not like world changing and similar thing again. And this, now if we go to the 1st of July, which was that second spike we saw, well, then finishing up with this one too. So I knew that, uh, didn't really have any hard data from this one to say this was a morning dumper. Obviously, there was manipulation and holding hard above a rising VWAP and just continued craziness for the rest of the day. So I factored that in a little bit to say, okay, be ready if there's any, if it wants to prove strength, just get out of the way. Don't try to mess around with it. And same thing on this 1st of July, 2021. Similar news that we saw today of, yeah, pretty much similar news of they're deploying a new telemedicine program. And the news today was now they're doing a combined telemedicine deal with another company whatever it's all just irrelevant anyway never really broke vwap at any point on this day except during market hours when that was the nail in the coffin uh, that it never even came close to touching vwap again a little bit here a little bit here but just fading not fading super hard not just completely dying off but proving that when it was under vwap then the manipulation was obviously over and the trend was confirmed at that point so that's what i Carrying a little bit today on this trade, and yes, a little bit shaken, 
little bit shaken, I'll say it that way, that of this taking this first loss, but as I continue to do that more and more and get more experience being in that, it phases me less and less. I was totally less phased by this than the, I believe that was G, JZXN that I took a double one on as well. And that was the first one I ever did that. So being able to do more experiences and trades in this effect of getting stopped out, but still being able to get back in uh, and not being in the mindset of, oh, wasting day trades, blah, blah, you know, this thing, just crying about it. No, it's, that's just part of trading. And it's going to happen alongside, just like Tim Gratani showed on his CYDY video from a long time ago, last year. You're going to get stopped out. You're going to get, it's going to try to piss you off. That's the stock market playing off your emotions. But this one was a beautiful uh, morning dump. Crack of VWAP held a little bit. And I feel like I kind of lucked out. This We potentially could have squeezed higher. I could, I would have totally been able to see that. And I would have had to take that blow again. Probably an, an even bigger loss. And double up on that if it wanted to. Just spike a little bit more and take in some more early shorts like me, but we ended up dumping hard, confirming the trend, at least in the pre-market, for the downtrend, took off half of the shares, took off 100 shares at 10%, got closer to market open, and I was just feeling that I needed to take a little bit more size off just to feel a little bit more comfortable. So I acknowledged that and said, okay, I'll take off 50 more shares, leaving 50 left for market hours if it wanted to take this half of the chart and put it here and we go to six dollar whole level then i would have taken off those remaining 50 shares at that point just to give me myself a little bit more comfort especially with how far we were from view app at that point and the past history of the stock combined with the low float it is a it's an american company so not like it's a chinese over manipulation but low floats always and with shorting is always be Take the money when you can, not when you have to, is how I want to look at this and take my little sniblet of the market and just run away as I can. So I had 50 shares remaining and again, kind of arbitrarily set my risk level at 7.5. Uh, my entry was 7.56, 7.56 on this second play, like 7.58 on this first one. And then I got 801 for the exit. So, yeah, I gave myself like six cents of room for the spread just to cover a little bit of the borrowing fees if it wanted to come back this far in the market hours, which I was doubting at this point when we were starting to continue to fall off. But the dip and rip opportunity was there. This little bit of a 25, 625 hold held pretty well. Nice dip and rip, 10% opportunity there. And just got stopped out once again. And this, I just frustrate myself over and over that I kind of define the trade parameters for this morning dump or gap and crap pattern as get an entry at the crack of view app. That's your signal and your risk level is that high of day. And I tease myself in and out. I'm getting good profits and I'm easing my emotions well and taking off half at least at 10% profit and taking more off the table when price continues to dump, but the pattern just continues to prove over and over again. And I, I need to go and look back and see where there's been a true during market hours, when a stock has truly come back to either test that high of day risk level and continue to hold strength versus just die off like it did today after it just fusses around and gets out some weak shorts in the morning hours. And then, pulls back to even lower than 20% this would have been. Seven, six, or five, yeah. Like, I could not see myself holding a full position all the way down there, but just trying to continue to refine and define this line of what is the best trading path for this strategy. And that is the never ending goal and pursuit of what we're looking for to do is get as close to perfection as we can. It's just gonna be continue to be killing myself over the little things and you know it's never going to be good enough which i'm fine with on this as the money's coming in and taking a in total on this one a like 46 dollar win uh, from the second trade covering the profits covering the loss of that first trade 
you know, I'm not disappointed with that. I'm just excited about being able to nail these types of setups even better in the future. And that's really what the goal of all this is. It's in no way, shape or form is it about the money, about the dollar size. And that's what I had to tell myself both ways. So I can't just look at profits and say, oh, a hundred bucks on this profit, on this trade as profit, you know, it's whatever. And then say, oh my gosh, I lost $86. I'm ruined. You know, that doesn't make any sense. I can't put more weight on the loss than I put more on the gain. There needs to be balance. And I think in total that the weight on both sides just needs to be decreased. And that comes through experience of trading and continuing to dive headfirst into all of this in whether I kind of look at this as an algorithm trade or how I want to completely trade this because that's just only going to refine the strategy more and more and get me closer to what that goal is of perfection on this morning dump setup. So great opportunity, A plus opportunity. That's we're looking for the percentage moves and the non breaking of that risk, those defined risk levels that we don't even have to set. They're just defined for us. It was all there today on MEDS. AP, let's see. God, and then kicking myself for allowing myself to get some sleep and catch up from yesterday. So slept in a little bit, missed APRE. I saw this like within this minute candle, just as it was cracking VWAP. And like, oh, that was a terrible way to start the morning thinking, man, if I had just squeezed out that poop a little bit quicker, I would have been on my mouse just in time to catch that move. Uh, the opportunity percentage points were there on this one. Uh, this one, let's see, the fundamentals. It's an American biotech, exactly what we're looking for. 14 million float, 13% reported short interest. Kind of sketchy, but we can deal with it. And then news catalyst of positive results from a phase two trial. Uh, decent total sell off on the daily as well too so nice amount of overhead and big volume day back there that could have provided some selling pressure as well a little bit testy here as you can see it reclaimed vwap but ultimately trend faded off and poo pooed the rest of the day so a little pissed that i missed that one lexx another awesome one uh, this is 7:25 eastern time in the morning again wasn't up slept in maybe would have been in and Taking my 10% here at this point, played a few more shares, maybe taking off similar how I did it on MEDS that I took off half here and then took off a quarter at this point before market open. Got kind of chunky monkey the rest of the market day in the morning. You can see, especially as we broke that pre-market high of day. So I certainly would have been out at that point. But this one's just kind of confusing it to add to the mix too, just just to always keep you on your toes that there is no strategy that is 100% that you can't define something with certainty. There is no scientific algorithm that leads to profitability. There is a mix and match of reading the level two, reading the time and sales, reading the fundamentals of the company, reading just the past history of its characteristics, how it likes to trade. Just different factors that you can't ever 100% nail down all the time. But the profit opportunity was certainly there in the morning and I would have been well out of a lot of shares and a lot of profit on the table by market open had I been on this one. Pretty awesome. Uh, APRE as well. I was kind of tempted and starting off the morning that way, I was just like, oh, angry that I missed LEXX and APRE. Saw this big red candle reject in the pre-market and was thinking, man, 5.4 could be a level, could be pretty good. It could go. I could see this going down 10% more from 5.4. And of course it did down to, that would be 4.9, right? But you're not going to catch them all. Man, it's whatever. I don't, I don't regret being, I'm never going to regret being on the sidelines versus being stuck in a huge squeezer out of nowhere. So on to the next one. Neuro. Oh my gosh. This pre-market move we can talk about first. Well, let's talk about yesterday too. Great move. Halts. Closing with awesome strength from yesterday after hours holding very well as well this pre-market not dying off a little bit of volume coming in just holding above vwap pushing above the little highs of this pre-market testing these ranges of the after hours and just big shoots into the market open 
with like five halts within half an hour. I, I don't even want to try to count. It was just so frustrating to try and keep track of this thing because it was never trading. It's so ridiculous. So much volatility, so much opportunity. Let's look at the fundamentals. Only 1.9 billion traded today on this one. Yeah, only. But the float again of 3 million, reported short interest of 1%. And also had news today at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Um, oh, this was a repeat of the news from yesterday of their FDA designation, breakthrough device, whatever. But just insane, insane volatility. So I actually was able to play my hand a little bit on the dip buy from this huge pullback. I think Kyle Williams was trading this. He was able to trade this short during this peak here and took in 29K, I think, from the gap down. Oh, my gosh. I, yeah, I, I'm not at the point yet to try and stick my hand in that fire, but I can s totally see the opportunity. But I was totally ready to play the dip buy on this one, you know, having some amount of experience on that from OTCs. So after this halt here, it was cool to see that bid and ask were kind of building or playing around even during the halt. And you could see that, hey, we're coming around like the 24 level, and then it dipped a little bit under 24, and then it came back to 2401, 2402. That was just cool to see. It didn't show on my thinkorswim, interestingly enough, but it did show on scans. So showing the trades on this. I just got totally chopped around, stupidified, I'll put it as, what was a beautiful and perfect dip by beyond 10%. I just got screwed around, that's not showing my trades, of, I bought pretty well, like my first entry was 24 something, I believe, uh, what I was doing, and then I thought we were selling off, and I thought we were going to come back down quick. I mean, I'm trading like 10 shares. It's not like I was trading a huge position size anyway, but kind of traded a little bit off of that motion. Oh, I think it's going to come back down and sell. And then I think I got filled below what my entry was and took a little stupid loss. And then it was starting to come back up again. I was like, oh, get back in. And then it just started showing a little bit of weakness. These top wicks on these candles are just what would do me in of, oh, it's going up, it's going up, bye, bye, bye. Oh, it's going down, it's going down, sell, sell, sell. It's just... Rookie, rookie mistakes on what was a beautiful and incredibly liquid dip by opportunity there on this listed mover today. So it didn't really uh, die off hard or move up harder the rest of the day. Just kind of held this ranges. I played like a one share position again here just for how well it was holding, thinking, man, this risk reward is awesome. Of uh, taking off maybe at VWAP or any of these technical levels. So I took off at like 23 or something from a $26 position, three buck loss, whatever. I totally take that for the potential upside that this had on that VWAP hold type of trade. But it just didn't have it at the cards today. So now it's under VWAP. See what it does tomorrow. It's certainly not dead. The daily is just totally parabolic. So maybe gaps down a little bit, panics more at the open, has another dip by opportunity. We'll see. CEMI, this was a great mover in the pre-market. So, fundamentals first, it's an American healthcare diagnostic and research company, float of 18.5 million, reported short interest of 7.5%. News catalyst, yesterday at 10, I'm doing the math here, 10.56 p.m. Eastern Time. So, of course, after after hours close. News Catalyst then was uh, CEMI receives $28.3 million purchase order from blah, 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 blah for SARS COVID 2 antigen chest, whatever. So decent news, holding pretty well in this pre market. I, yeah, I do not want to be, this is not a morning dump setup to me in any chance when it's extended so far and holding so well as a pre market spiker. So it was trading huge, insane amount of volume, over 100 million, even before market open. At the end of the day here, we're sitting at $2.18 billion volume. Just ludicrous how this traded more than Neuro, I guess, because it had more time to trade from how many halts Neuro had. But another note, too, it had the 424B5 
on the 19th for a 60 million at the money offering. So the fact that they haven't released an effect as of yet or published that offering makes me think maybe there could be a little bit more potential in this one for the next few days if they think they're going to risk if they think they're going to get more opportunity out of this one obviously it's a huge standalone volume candle day um, some little amounts of technical overhead if you want to call that any even more so looking further back on the timeline but i'm keeping it on my watch as a long especially with the lower float not a micro float per se but uh, definitely doable with the 388 million shares that traded today yeah 18 million float is kind of nothing so i got totally chopped around it's not showing my trades i was just totally chopping in and out in and out in and out looking at a like a dip and rip type of setup on this one the smarter trader in me says okay you should be looking to buy dips and be willing to take loss after loss on the ones that just don't work versus what I try to do of I'm looking to just buy the little quick breakout so I was buying here and like oh it's coming back down sell and just buying again here as it's doing another breakout and oh great great I'm in the money oh now it's coming back down sell and just like any even on the individual time frame looking at this on the tick which I was trading just totally getting screwed over and over again on the emotion that I was trading of that style just looking for a quick little hit quick little move to sell into and it's not like this one wasn't moving quick enough for that type of trading you know looking at the intraday this on this one in total and on most of these dip and rip setups you got to be willing to trade a longer time frame than just two minutes which is what really idealized I got spoiled on in the 2020 market of seeing quick or huge percentage movers and thinking oh I'm just gonna this looks like a nice breakout opportunity oh here that little five percent yeah sell nice profit it just stupidly and even with the small size I was trading I think I was in and out of this like 50 shares at most for each way and just trying to chewing through my cash account it's just not how I want to view these in the future and I think I need more time on the paper trading route on these for the opportunity that was there and if we're gonna get more and more of these coming out of the summer months that there needs to be a wider scope placed on these from me in order to get the meat of the move even if that does mean taking off early even if I do sell into strength here at 5-2 that doesn't mean this was a bad trade as we see it continuing to go just under seven dollars but she's awesome mover today and yes it's will continue to be on my watch list for going into tomorrow to see if we get some more craziness as they have not released any offering news i can see as of yet so i had some other first green day shorts lined up from yesterday on the first green day short kind of scanner that i was looking at xtnt was the only one that really worked out I had some news go through the fundamentals quick this one, American Medical Device Company, float of 4.8 million, reported short interest of 15%. They had news, they did not have news catalyst yesterday, I can see. Just a pretty nice uh, perk in the after hours here, uh, looking to set with weak volume in today. So that was a great opportunity on that one if I was looking to. And then the other ones that didn't end up working out, ENDP. Um, yeah, just kind of stupid choppy. Ended up being another second green day. TLIS. Same thing. A little bit of weakness here in this pre-market with a little volume trading. Dumped a little bit, but not like a 10% opportunity or really A-plus setup to waste your mental capital on. And then LXU was another one. Just kind of a green day, not really dying off hard, even after what was uh, pretty nice. And then also, this one was also coming up on little bit of technical levels from yesterday too so that I thought that could have been a little bit of resistance on this nice ticker but it wasn't new breakout highs so those were just some um, failed first green day shorts AEHR didn't even see this one on the radar but huge move into the close today still going pushing new breakout highs 
after that red day yesterday. Absolutely insane. Continue to go beyond $9 in the after hours market here. Really, really awesome to see. This one will be on watch for tomorrow morning if it wants to start panicking or if it wants to go for even more parabolic. I'm all about it. So we'll keep it on watch. SGOC. This one might be coming off watch uh, as it's just showing a little bit more weakness. Kind of looks like AMC when it was hovering and now we might be in a downtrend. Could be a good shorting opportunity, but I'm not going to stick my capital in it. I'll just watch it, learn from it, see if I can trade that same type of chart, daily chart in the future. MRIN, first green day today. Good amount of volume after this. Pretty nasty fall off of that incredible incredible peak could have played this one as you know it's holding higher high it's already green on the day it's holding this consolidation level and you got would have got rewarded with a huge green spike opportunity uh, beyond 10 percent there for that one right away in the morning and then even tried to play this for the <laughs> insane first green day move uh, as it was just continuing to pound and test these breakout levels shorts got super screwed within this time frame Nice first screen day, little chart on that one. And then EYES, perking in the after hours here. I do not, uh, I didn't really look for news catalyst. I don't even see a news catalyst on this one. But again, former runner from back in March, float of 17.9 million, reported short interest of 14%. So, could get pretty crazy. We haven't even seen any real volume come in. As it, yeah, we, not real volume, but this is pretty decent volume. So we could see this get a little bit more froggy in the next few days as this is kind of a first green day, if you want to call it, of the opportunity it has. Of course, could be some heavy overhead resistance from that former run, but I think it could have some legs for its eyes to see clearer skies in the future. <laughs> But anyway, that's all I got today. Thank you guys for watching. We will catch you guys on the next one.